This is part 81 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery tooltip widget with examples. To get a tooltip without using jQuery, all you need to do is set the title attribute. On this page right here, we've got two elements, a label and an input element of type text. Notice both of these elements have got title attribute. At this point, if we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. And look at what's going to happen when I hover the mouse over this name label. Notice its title attribute value is displayed as a tooltip. Similarly, when I have the mouse over this text box, again, its title attribute value is displayed as a tooltip. At the moment, we're using the native tooltip. We can also use jQuery to get this tooltip. And the jQuery tooltip widget replaces the native tooltip and it allows a lot of customization. Now, let's see how to use the jQuery tooltip widget. First, let's find one of these elements by ID. Let's find this text box element by ID. So let's use the jQuery ID selector. And the ID of the text box is txt name. So on this, I am going to call tooltip function. So if you want to use the jQuery tooltip widget, all you have to do is use this tooltip function. At this point, when we reload our page, this text box should be using the jQuery tooltip widget. Look at that. That is a tooltip produced using jQuery tooltip widget, whereas the name label still uses the native tooltip. Now, at the moment, on this page, I've got two elements. So if we have, let's say, 10 elements and all of them have title attribute, now, if I want to use jQuery tooltip widget with all those elements, then do I have to find each element by ID like this and then call the tooltip function? Not really. You can use the document object. So I can use the document object like that. So selector is the document object and on that we are calling the tooltip function. So let's save the changes. Let's reload our page and look at that. When I have the mouse over name label, it's using the tooltip widget. Similarly, the text box is also using the tooltip widget. So when you use the document object as the selector, then you know the jQuery tooltip widget will be used by all the elements on that page that have got the title attribute. Now, at the moment here, we're using the title attribute to specify the content that we want to display in the tooltip. That's one way. Another way is you can use the content option of the tooltip function to specify the content for your tooltip. Now, what happens when you specify content using both title attribute and content option? In that case, whatever content you have specified using the content option will override the content specified by the title attribute. So let's look at that in action. So here we are saying your full name as it appears in Passport. That is the content for this text box, you know, which we want to display using a tooltip. Now let's use the jQuery ID selector, so txt name, and we're calling the tooltip function. Now let's customize. So I'm going to use the content option here. And using this content option, we can specify the content that we want to display, you know, using the jQuery tooltip widget. Now I have some string here already typed, so let me copy this and paste it right here. So that is our content, okay? And let's use, you can also use HTML, um, you know, inside the string if you want. Let's bold it. Let's also underline it just to prove that you can use HTML. Okay, so let's save the changes. So now this text box has, you know, title attribute as well as content option. At this point, if we view this page in the browser and when we hover the mouse over this text box, look at what we are getting. We are getting content option tooltip overriding title attribute tooltip. So the content that is specified using the content option will override the content specified by the tooltip. Now, this content option supports multiple types, string or a function. In the in this example, we're using string, you know, the content for the tooltip. You can also specify a function that returns data. So, for example, within our document.ready function or in an external JavaScript file, you could have a function. Let's call this get tooltip 
data and you know your function could be returning some data like tooltip from a function and now we could use this function with the content option okay so let's save the changes reload this page and look at this when I have the mouse over now we're getting that tooltip content from a function so for this content option you can specify either a string or a function that function could even be retrieving data from the database using Ajax now use this track option um, you know if you want to a tooltip that follows the mouse pointer okay so at the moment if you look at the tooltip look at this wherever you know the hovering happens the tooltip is displayed exactly below the text box now if you want that tooltip to follow the mouse pointer then all you need to do is set the track option to true so let's go ahead and do that let's save the changes reload this page and look at what's going to happen so we have the tooltip there and as I drag the mouse look at what's going to happen the tooltip follows the pointer show and hide options can be used to animate the showing and hiding of the tooltip both of these options support multiple types now for the detailed description of these two options please check jQuery documentation at this URL now here we are using both the show and hide options so let's go ahead and use them within our example so I'm using the show option now this option as I told before it supports multiple times now I'm going to use a JavaScript object and specify the options for the animation when this tooltip is displayed let's say we want a delay of 100 milliseconds okay and the duration for the tooltip animation let's say 500 milliseconds and you can also specify the effect of animation what animation do you want let's say we want the tooltip to slide down similarly when the tooltip is being hidden what animation options do you want again I'm going to specify them using a JavaScript object so a delay of 100 milliseconds duration of 500 milliseconds and an effect of slide up okay so let's save the changes let's reload this page and look at this when I have the mouse over it slowly slides down and it slowly slides up okay now you can use different effects for example I can use explode let's reload this look at this when I have the mouse over it slowly slides down and when I mouse out it explodes thank you for listening and have a great day